This week on Outdoor Oklahoma, our biologists team up with the Nature Conservancy at the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve in Osage County as they research the incredible wildlife diversity of the preserve. Hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead and today I'm joined by our wildlife diversity specialist Gina Donnell. Hi Todd, thanks for having me. You know Gina, part of your job consists of informing and educating the public about our tremendous diversity in the state. That's right, we have over 800 species of wildlife in the state and we're actually tied for second in the nation for ecological diversity. My goodness, I would assume that to know that in the first place that we've got to do you know, we got to count them at some point, right? We do. We, uh, we've got to spend a lot of time in the field surveying what populations of wildlife we have out there. There's only certain times of the year that we can survey, only certain times that some species are active, and uh, it's, a, it's a fairly large state, so we've got to rely on a lot of partners to get all that inventory work completed. You know, when you say things like inventory and surveying, I kind of I kind of think of like a store clerk, you know, at the end of the year when he does his year in inventory and he literally just goes around and check marks off the things that he still has on the shelf. Is that really any different? That's essentially what we're doing in the field. Um, it's literally a, a bunch of biologists go into the field. We're looking high and low for whatever species we can find. We've got a clipboard and, <laughs> and we just write down everything that we see. We also make sure to add the numbers uh, of each species that we see so we can get an idea of what the population is doing. That's great. You know, you mentioned partners and one of our long-standing partners uh, with the wildlife department is the Nature Conservancy. And I, I think probably of all their properties in Oklahoma, my favorite is the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve. The Tallgrass Prairie Preserve is amazing. It's this large, vast area of, of unbroken prairie. So it's, a, it's an amazing place to go visit.
you know, Gina, it's, it's really thrilling to see that the bison are still thriving there on the preserve. Yeah, there's over 30,000 acres of unfenced <laughs> habitat for those bison. And from what I understand, there's just under 2,000 bison on the preserve now. Oh, that's great. You know, we were actually there rolling cameras when they released them back in the early 90s. And now we're going to take a look back with our own Paul Moore and Melinda Hickman at that historic day. It was a landscape of the purest delight. Early explorers called it a vast and glorious prairie spreading out as far as the eye could see. And the country was overflowing with the game, so much so that it seemed like fiction now. Antelope and turkeys, prairie chickens and beavers, panthers and bears, and of course, the buffalo. But sometime during the 1800s, it all quietly disappeared. A tall grass prairie that covered the middle of our nation with a green belt the size of France was gone. And one of the major players shaping the prairie ecosystem for 10,000 years was nearly wiped out. At one point, nearly 60 million bison freely roamed across North America, but by 1890, in just 20 short years, only about 1,000 were left. The rest had been slaughtered. The magnificent buffalo, which could weigh as much as a ton, covered the land like a living blanket from horizon to horizon. Hello everybody, thanks for joining us today on Outdoor Oklahoma. Today's show we're going to talk about something that's been in the news quite a bit lately and that's the tall grass prairie and the bison, an animal that roamed our state and our continent in vast numbers years and years ago. Joining me is Melinda Hickman. Melinda's a biologist with our natural resources section with the wildlife department. Melinda, you hear a lot when you're talking about tall grass prairies and bisons about the ecosystem, but what does that word mean? What is an ecosystem? Great question, Paul. Imagine a community of plants and a community of animals depending on those plants. And between these two communities, they're interacting with other physical factors such as geography, geology, even fires. Now let's look at the prairie ecosystem. You have a community of plants made primarily of grasses. Then you have this large herbivore, bison, and large herds moving through, grazing the area, trampling, wallowing. Following the bison, you have prairie dogs. They need the, the short grass to be able to look out for predators. They burrow into the ground for their, their towns. And you have burrowing owls who need those burrows. Then you have a harvester ants who need the burrows as well to, uh, to make their nest. And we have the Texas horn lizards, you know, here that depends on those har harvester ants for food. Now the buffalo are wallowing and making these depressions to protect their skin from annoying insects. These depressions uh, collect water, and the water stays there just long enough to allow the toads to move in, mate, lay eggs, eggs hatching into tadpoles, tadpoles emerging into toads. All of this because you have this large herbivore, this bison, and herds moving through a grassland community, grazing and trampling as they go. So I guess all of the animals in the different species are interrelated and they, they need each other to, to survive. They need each other, they depend on each other. In order for an ecosystem to be healthy and fertile, sometimes you do have to have some drastic change. And in the case right. of the tall grass prairie, that change or disturbance comes in the form of buffaloes or in the form of fire. Right. We're very lucky to have a healthy ecosystem at the tall grass prairie where we have 36,000 acres that hopefully will be a complete system unto itself. Exactly, and, and Paul, recently I, I was able to attend the bison release at the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve, and I assure you it's a, it's a point in my life I will never forget, the seeing the buffalo um, rumble out onto the prairie, hearing the prayer that the Osage Indian Chief was offering out over the prairie was um, something I'll never forget.
Isn't it fun to kind of look back at those old videos sometimes? It sure is. And the great thing is I actually still get to work with Melinda. You know, who knows, in 20 years, somebody might be sitting on this same park bench looking at old video of us. They very well could be. <laughs> we'll be back with more from the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve right after this week's Outdoor News Report. You know, Gina, the, the more I spend time around our wildlife biologists, the more that I'm impressed with them because there's a lot that goes into being a modern day wildlife biologist. There certainly is. And one of the integral things of being a biologist is conducting survey work. So keeping a check on the, the pulse of our populations. We can actually go back after several years of that, that baseline data, we can go back and check, see if, if populations are increasing or decreasing, maybe even tying that to changes in, in the wildlife habitat. Well, today we're going to follow along with a Nature Conservancy biologist and primarily be looking at aquatic species on the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve. We're here today helping out the Nature Conservancy do some sampling on the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve up in Osage County. Well, the two basic ways that we're sampling are that we are uh, seining, uh, doing seine hauls, pulling a big net through the water, uh, as well as doing some electrofishing with a backpack electrofisher and, and scooping up the fish that are stunned through that process. The Nature Conservancy is a, is a worldwide organization that is interested in conservation of all kinds of species, uh, both species that are uh, you know, here in Oklahoma as well as species that are all over, the, all over the, the globe. And they're very interested in conservation and species management. And so they are a great partner for agencies like, like us. Uh, and what's great for you know, the people of Oklahoma is that there are several preserves around the state, uh, like the Tallgrass Prairie, that give them an opportunity to come out and see some, some native habitat and some of the species that are found in those, that native habitat, you know, like the birds or uh, the bison that are up here on the Tallgrass Prairie that you might not normally get to see. I'm Kimberly Elkin. I'm with the Nature Conservancy. I work on their freshwater conservation program statewide. Um, we're at Tallgrass Prairie Preserve, which is one of five preserves that I'm monitoring uh, streams on. We have an aquatic monitoring plan here at the preserve, and it's a five-year plan. We're into the second year, and we are collecting biological data, including what we're doing today, the fish uh, sampling and identification, as well as relative abundance. And then we're looking at macroinvertebrates, water quality, hydrology. Uh, we have some water level loggers out and also geomorphology. And so it's basically uh, baseline data to help us monitor the streams on our preserves. And we're also um, collecting information to determine the effects of oil and gas production on the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve. Currently we have over 200 oil and gas wells, um, three of which are fracking well sites. Uh, the rest are just your traditional conventional wells. What we use a baseline study for is to go out and to collect data so we can see what a normal condition is like. And that way when we come back in future years and we compare the, the data that we get on subsequent years to that original year, that, that baseline, we can determine whether things are changing, improving, uh, or declining, and that helps 
us mold our management strategies and decide what we need to do or if any action is even needed um, in those areas. Yes, actually there's several species of, of water snake that are very, very common, including uh, the diamondback water snake and the yellow-bellied water snake. But um, they're much more common than the cottonmouth. And you can tell the difference because if you look at their eye, they've got this big round eye with a round pupil, which the cottonmouths don't, they have a vertical pupil, uh, just like all the pit vipers in Oklahoma. And when they swim, the cottonmouths will actually lay across the top of the water and the water snakes typically swim with just their head up like that. And so that's a good way of, of IDing them while they're in the water. So cottonmouth looks like a log, whereas the water snake looks like just the head sticking up. And sometimes you can see their body through the water. But, but they, will, they will bite and they have lots of teeth. So best just to uh, let them go, eat fish, and be on their merry little way. The snake that we found earlier was a a diamondback water snake, uh, it's a, a very common water snake that's found uh, throughout most of, the, most of the state, at least the eastern half of the state. Uh, and it's one of the species that's very commonly confused for the water moccasin, which is, uh, the water moccasin is a, is a venomous snake that's found in the eastern half of the state, um, mostly the southeastern uh, part of the state. But, it, but it's a non-venomous snake and, and eats primarily fish, and so you find it around water, and uh, most ponds have some species of water snake uh, that's closely related to that species that are found in that pond. Uh, well, we found most of the stuff that we expected to find uh, that we've done in the past. This is the uh, second or third year of, of a multi-year survey that uh, the Nature Conservancy is doing. Um, you know, we were able to find some species in this uh, section that we didn't find some of the other ones, which is not uncommon. Um, but we saw some, some emerald shiners, which we didn't see in the past, so that was kind of interesting. Although they are a relatively common species statewide. It's pretty exciting to you know, see what we get from years past and compare it to what we get today to see if there's any changes going on in abundance or any species decline. Uh, we have several species that are um, good water quality indicators and comparing from year to year is a good way to see you know, if there are any declines going on and what's going on with our habitat here in addition to any water quality changes. The Nature Conservancy is, uh, is a great uh, partner that we have, that they share some of our same uh, uh, values that we do as an agency uh, and go along with, with our mission and we're both interested in uh, managing wildlife and so uh, you know, to foster that, and that relationship and to address those species needs, uh, we always try to help each other out where we can.
to give you a little history, the Nature Conservancy is a worldwide organization. We work in every state um, and we also work in 35 countries and we have uh, over 3,000 employees and over 400 freshwater staff dedicated to doing this kind of work. And this is kind of a new endeavor for Oklahoma's Nature Conservancy. They've been wanting to build a freshwater program and that's why they hired me. And so um, I think it's important to see uh, if there's any changes going on in the landscape and things that we can do as humans to maybe improve that and hopefully uh, protect additional lands. Hallgrass Prairie Preserve is open to the public. Um, there's the main county road that runs through here and everyone's here to see the bison, uh, but there are lots of streams uh, that people don't realize, some off the sort of beaten path. Uh, but yes, uh, you can come and get tours. There's a trail you can go hiking on. Um, so I encourage you to come visit the Hallgrass Prairie. You know, Gina, there are also opportunities for the public to get involved in our citizen scientist program, yes, too. Yes, there, there certainly are. We've got uh, a nest box survey that we've got going on, as well as a hummingbird feeder survey. People can actually even report the Texas horn lizard sightings. That's great. So plenty of opportunities for you to become a, a wildlife biologist of such yourself. Hey, thanks for joining us today. For all of us at your wildlife department and for Gina, I'm Todd Craighead and we'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.